So here we are, episode three of ABM in the house. It seems like only yesterday we were talking about doing this series, eh? Um, episode one saw us describe the steps to take um, to make sure you can build out your ICP. Um, last week in episode two, we spoke about how to select the target account list for your ABM program. Before I go anywhere else, is that is that a Zoom background? It, it looks it looks amazing. Hey, Alex. Uh, good to see you again. Actually, this is my garden. I thought as this um, we're doing this series called ABM in the house, I thought perhaps we could move out of our offices and our, uh, our, our attics and, uh, and start moving the show around uh, our house. So I thought today I'd, uh, I'd do it from, my, from the garden and thankfully the weather's beautiful today. Oh, mate, that looks, that looks awesome. It's, it's, um, it's not great over here in the UK. So maybe I'll, if, if it's nicer next week, I'll do it in my garden. Uh, okay. Awesome. Great, great to see that you're well and, uh, and you've got the, the sun shining in the background. So, um, all right, now the ICP and target account list. What do you want to talk about today? Well, as you said, we've got the ICP. That was in episode one. Episode two, obviously, we had the target account list. I think it's now time to decide, you know, how do we actually look at the contacts within those target accounts that we actually want to go after? Um, and I think, you know, there's an awful lot of documentation out there, an awful lot of research out there that... The, the B2B buying journey has become very, very complex. Um, mm. You know, it takes, it's a, it's a complex journey. Multiple stakeholders are involved. Um, the life cycle has, ex has been extended, et cetera. And typically anywhere between four and 10, 15 people are involved. So it's not a case now of just targeting one person or one contact or one, you know, chief marketing officer, et cetera. You now need to actually map out the, what we call the decision-making unit or the DMU and actually map out all the roles that are actually involved in that. And, and typically, you know, we, we're very familiar with terms such as, you know, champion, influencer, budget holder, et cetera. So look at, looking at the decision-making unit of that target account is probably the next step for us. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, hundred percent. Like we've got to think about a more complex cell now, particularly for mm -hmm. ABM. So having having that decision making unit mapped out um, seems like a really sensible next step. Um, mm -hmm. So it sounds like what we've got to do is almost get under their skin a little bit uh, to have a successful ABM program. Um, I always sort of reflect that it's about accounts, right? It's not about leads. It's about the account and everyone within it. So um, for me, it's about not trusting your gut and being a bit more forensic. So. Let's kind of uh, let's start looking at those steps to building your your buyer persona, if that's okay with you. Yeah. What's, so what's think, the first one for you? Yeah. So I think step one would be to identify the buyer personas. Okay. And I think one of the kind of recurring themes that we've got running through this series is is that we need to be talking to our sales teams. We need to be talking to our customer success teams. We need to talk to the wider organisation. We need to be getting all of that information, all of that insight all that invaluable um, engagement that these teams have with our customers and with our prospects. And so I would suggest that we, we talk to the sales teams, we talk to the customer success teams, and we review, let's say, for example, our last 20 deals, okay? And ask some questions about, you know, who was involved in those deals? What people were actually involved in making the decision? Which people were on the phone call? which people were on the email chain, write down the job titles and the role that they played in the decision. And as I mentioned before, were they the champion? Were they the executive sponsor? Were they the budget holder? Were they an influencer? Were they indeed a blocker, which is really important? Uh, were they an end user? I mean, there's lots of roles and we can go into that in a bit more detail, but that's, that's a really first step for me is, is looking at those buyer persona involved. Obviously, you know, your CRM such as HubSpot now has those fields, so that can, can be very helpful. Um, and obviously, you know, everyone out there watching this, you know your business better than anybody. You'll know that there are different roles involved in it, and they are even specific to your company or specific to your industry. So have a look at that. And I think once you have those kind of buyer persona mapped out and identified, you can then go to the next step, which for you, Alex, would be? I like to get under their skin, um, mm. particularly when building kind of profiles. I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see made is uh, businesses build like a, a characteristic profile. You know, these are all the characteristics of, of, of the personas that we're going after. And I don't think that really helps you. Partly because what you need to do is you need to start enabling your sales, customer success and marketing team, right? Map mm -hmm. out what influences their buying decisions. You know, we want to influence their behavior as part of this, right? So you want to understand their attitude, the decision criteria, the actions that cause a buyer 
to determine your solution to be the best, right? Mm. So we look at things like what are their objectives and their goals? What are the KPIs that they're measured on? The pain points and the challenges, particularly now, right? Pain points and challenges have changed. So you should be refreshing those buyer personas um, that you've got. Uh, make sure that you have the relevant um, value proposition and messaging for those individual uh, personas. What perhaps might be some of their common objections to your solution. Um, you can then start to build like a talk track and the talking points to sort of open a conversation. Um, I also like to almost give them a personality. I think it's really, it's really important. Mm -hmm. It allows your sales team when you're doing training on it uh, to really understand what makes them tick. So those are things that we do. Sometimes it's good to jazz them up, give them some names, but really important, focus on their challenges and what motivates them to buy. Um, yeah. That's really what, what we're about, getting under the skin. Um, yeah. Does that all make sense? And if so, what, what's kind of the, the final bit for you? Yeah, I think it's really important, actually. And I think, you know, trying to, to go uh, uh, you know, as deep as possible in, in, into that, that persona is, is really helpful. And, and trying to bring that persona to life, um, because at, at the end of the day, we're, 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 you know, we're working with, we're selling to, we're building relationships with other people. And trying to, to make the intangible tangible, I find, is really, really helpful. So I think the next step for us would be, once you've got that mapped out, you now need to actually go and find those buyer persona. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot of tools out there that can help us. Now, obviously, everyone tends to have, you know, LinkedIn and Sales Navigator. We, we use Sales Navigator to map out that decision-making unit. We go and find those people on, on, on Sales Navigator as, as the first step. And then, obviously, you know, in order to engage with those people, you need to actually then get those, the contact details because with LinkedIn and Sales Navigator, we'll only give you so much information. So there are a lot of tools that we've mentioned in previous episodes, such as, you know, Cognizant, Lead IQ, Zoom Info, et cetera. These tools are, are gdpr compliant which is obviously very very important and you can then use those tools to actually get the contact details of these people be it the address be it the email um be it the telephone number etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you can sync that information with your crm or with your marketing automation platform and i think that's really the basis for us so i think with those three steps alex um how does that sound in terms of an approach to you it's pretty much identical to how we do it, um, which, which is really good. It's refreshing to hear. Um, I love that final bit. Obviously, you've got to get those compliant databases and make sure you get the contact data in. They can obviously refresh that. Um, but yeah, it makes, makes total sense. So that sounds relatively straightforward in some ways. But uh, if you enable yourself with those tools, it makes it uh, a lot easier. If you do it manually, it can be quite tricky. Mm. Um, okay, so I suppose next now, we've got our ICP. We've got a target account list. We know the personas. We've got the contact data. Next bit is the really fun part, right? How do you um, think about your campaign execution strategy? What well, are the channels you're going to be using? Which tactics are you going to use? Start to build a playbook. Um, how do you measure engagement? This is the really fun part. It's where the rubber hits the road. So yeah. I think that's what I like to talk about in um, episode four. How does how's that sound to you? Sounds like a plan. Looking forward to it. Nice one, Dave. All right. Well, enjoy that sunshine. See you next week. Thank you. See you next week.